Hey guys, today I'll be taking a look at Elive Linux, a Debian-based Linux distro, and specifically today I'll be looking at their special version, which is a new, unique, Synthwave-inspired LTS Elive release. I'll just read some more about this. Uh, yeah, so a trip back to the 80s, a neon utopia for your computer, so it's like a nice neon-themed desktop, and yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, you can just Go look at the downloads. So they do have two other versions. They have a stable version, which is for older computers, is 32 bits. Then they have a beta, which is for 64-bit UEFI systems. Um, it's based on the E16 desktop environment. And I also think the special version is also the uh, E16 desktop environment. Okay, so now I'm about to boot into the live environment. Uh, so I'll just select 64-bit live with installer. So the special version is for 64-bit computers, and I do think they also have a 32-bit version as well. So yeah, very beautiful, clean-looking boot sequence for the live environment. Okay, so E16 offers an extremely stable desktop. Look and feel retro, but it's, okay. So this this is just a nice thank you from the developers. So very nice. I really like the effort they've put into the nice intro sequence. It's very nice. Okay, so choose our language. So yeah, English, United States, U.S. Normal. So nice music, I just want to mute that, just in case that that is copyrighted and I don't want to get copyright claimed. Okay, so select the desired features for our desktop. So compositor, we'll have that, we'll have Conky and Cairo doc all enabled. I'm, I'm going to leave all the defaults as is with all these menus. So because I want to see what this, how they want us to see this. I play a selection of the best retro wave music to imp improve your experience. One minute instructions, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so again, this is just the E16 desktop environment, so we can just go ahead and start the live installer. Hmm, I like the nice, like, Mario sound effect. It was pretty... It adds to the whole, like, retro feeling. Welcome to your first eLife desktop oh. experience. Oh, yeah, I did The first thing that you may want to know is how to run applications. You can go to this applications menu, and you have everything very well organized here. It's as you want. And right resize your images. Okay, so this is a nice little rundown of how to use this. Okay, so I'm just going to select automatic, but they do have options for like if you're trying to dual boot, you can just resize your Windows partition. And they do have Gparted too, which is really nice for like newer users. And GNOME disks. Okay, so they do have a lot of options here. Yes. EXT4. No. No. So I don't think this installer is just going to ask everything at once. I think it's just going to go through step by step. And then when it gets to like creating users and stuff like that, then it's going to ask us like, what's your username? What's your password and stuff like that. So I would say that is slightly inconvenient, but like that's just the installation process. It's not really hurting the whole user experience. So yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to skip through the parts where it's just installing and yeah, I'll see you guys when it's done. So it's still in the middle of installation, but it is asking me what features I don't want to have installed. So I'm just going to go through. So we have Bluetooth printer, scanner support, right? Samba, shared directories and printers, SSH remote access, block IPs to prevent continuously attempt attacks, disk utility. And then this is interesting. So by default, it's going to use systemd, but if you, you can like uncheck it and then it's going to switch to sysv in it, which is interesting. So I'm just going to leave everything as is again. So, okay. And okay. Some more features. So, I'm just going to uninstall all of this just so it goes faster. 
or unselect all of this so it installs faster. Uh, but it does give us the options to select what uh, software we want, so we're not going to be installing a bunch of bloat. So, okay. And we can do Firefox. Select some special features. To, okay, wow, they're really making sure this is as lightweight as possible. This is, I like the dedication. Yeah, so, yeah, we can select everything here except the one that's not recommended. Okay. Wow, they're really, really making sure this is as lightweight as possible. So, again, I'm not even installing Software Center. I remember I kept that unchecked. So I think, yeah, everything here is fine. Okay, so yeah, so some yeah, videos, all, yeah, Steam, Dropbox, all the non-free software, okay. Okay, so it's just gonna keep installing and now again, I'll see you guys when this is done. Okay, we're into the desktop. We need to configure a few things though. Okay, so some services that we wanna have enabled. Um, I'm just gonna leave everything as is. I don't see any reason to uncheck these, but you do have options for like health and news. Yeah, uh, eLive news health of like the system and hardware. I misinterpreted what these were at first. Um, yeah, but you have network connections. Okay, so there's a lot of services you could select. Okay, some desired features for the desktop environment. Yeah, we could have a compositor. We're gonna have Conky or Kyrodox, Kyrodoc, excuse me. Okay. Okay. Initiating startup sequence. Welcome to your first eLife desktop experience. So yeah, let's just actually explore this desktop. So we do have in we do have an applications menu right here. So we have editors, so it has Vim, VirtualBox, File Manager, Gnode. Yeah, so we did install Firefox. Let me just open that. Just keep exploring. Um, yeah, Cheese, Shotcut, OBS, VLC. Yeah, I did not install LibreOffice, so it's not there. Programming. Yeah, SIT, yeah, SIT text editor. Um, so there's very basic system utilities here and some like graphic applications. So if you don't select anything in the installer, you're still gonna have a very nice set of software. But at the same time, some might consider this bloat because I didn't voluntarily install like all of this, like Shotwell or anything, or VLC or OBS or all of that software. But in any case, we can just look at this. We have, yeah, with this running, we only have like, yeah, half a gigabyte of RAM. It's really good. And it runs pretty nice. Okay, YouTube is fine. Linux is a... I'm surprised I could even find it. The channel is so small right now. So, right now everything seems fine. I'm just gonna look through some system settings right here. This theme is just amazing though. I really like it, the whole retro, retro thing. But the, at the same time, I wouldn't really see myself like using this to do work or anything, because I just feel like it's just far too distracting to use it. But in any case, I feel like this is the Alive team has done a great job in making a very nice looking distro, but also making it lightweight. I think this distro has like a lot of potential for the future as well. 
Only thing is that the E16 desktop environment is not very popular and it might just turn away some users. But other than that, it is a very nice distro. Okay, great. Yeah, so 389 right now. And that's after using it too, which is pretty good too. And I've only given it like four gigs of RAM, so very, very good. Overall, my only problem with this distro is the fact that there's so much unnecessary bloat installed on it. Like, although these are all like very lightweight softwares, I'm not gonna see myself using things like, um, like Cinelera GG, right? Yeah, this is like a video editing software. I'm not gonna see myself using this. So I think that's one mistake the devs might've made in this because they're, they're trying to go for a lightweight distribution, but at the same time, they're putting a lot of bloatware on it too at the same time. Anyways, though, I really like the theming of it. I think that's what the devs really got right with uh, Elive Linux. And I really hope something comes out of this because I like the whole like theme of it, like the whole retro thing and having a retro based Linux distro. Like, of course, anybody can get like any sort of distro, right? Install KDE, do a little rising and get like a nice um, synth wave, retro wave um, theme. But right out of the box, having a distro like that is pretty nice too. I remember there was like Garuda Linux that um, was kind of similar to that in the sense that it was, I think it was Arch based. Um, he used KDE, but it was very, very like, I, I'm not sure whether it was synth, uh, synth based or like retro based, but it was very nice. So I, I like to see distros like that. That's very nice out of the box and has everything. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to go do a nice like full in-depth uh, review of Guerrilla Linux, but I will do that in the future, of course. But in any case, I think this distro is a solid six out of 10 or a seven out of 10 because it does have a lot of, uh, really a lot of potential and I could see good things coming out of this. But at the moment, I feel like the bloat is really holding back from it. And given that it's supposed to be a lightweight distro with a ton of like unnecessary software, Right, so thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any suggestions on any type of content to make or like any sort of distro that you guys want me to review or any Linux news, please just let me know in the comments and also just make sure to subscribe and leave a like. Thank you.